So I've decided to change the pacing of what I do, or better yet, the subject matter altogether. I decided to live stream just some of the presidential elections because I just read very, very briefly about this, that Joe Biden has withdrawn from the 2024 presidential election so that he can promote Pam Kamala Harris, his vice president, to the throne. Let's see what they have to say. Breaking news right now. President Biden has decided to step out of the race for the White House. I'm going to read you the statement that he released in full. My fellow Americans, over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a nation. Today, America has the strongest economy in the world. We've made historic investments in rebuilding our nation, in lowering prescription drug costs for seniors, and in expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We've provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances, passed the first gun safety law in 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court, and passed the most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been better positioned to lead than we are today. I know none of this could have been done without you, the American people. Together, we overcame a once-in-a-century pandemic and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and preserved our democracy, and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve you as your president. And while it has been my intention to seek re-election, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work. And let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I always have, that there is nothing America can't do when we do it together. We just have to remember we are the United States of America. That's the president of the United States, Joe Biden, saying that he is withdrawing from the 2024 presidential race. There you have it. So I want to comment on that. Um, first of all, while we are labeled as the United States of America, I don't believe we've been even more divided because lately I have seen, I even saw it today, I've seen people in San Francisco. To pretty much take it all. Frigid. That's crazy. Every single day I have an issue in San Francisco, California. And that's just one of many major cities in the U.S. And, you know, I came here because they're architectural, because I thought it would be better than L.A. But really, it's not. It's worse. It's very worse. As a matter of fact, every time I go down to Union Square and I go near the Tenderloin area, famously known for the homelessness and the drugs, you know, I see it's like a third world country. I am upset. I, 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 you know... I'm 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 mulatto. Um, my mother was white. My father was black. That I'm making that big deal because obviously Kamala Harris is of Indian and black descent or whatever. It does not look good for a person of minority status, especially when you're half and half. Like I'm, I I'm kind of mad at black people for stooping this low, for keep staying on drugs, for staying on fentanyl, for falling to the white man's sin. And I'm also fed up with white people for allowing it to happen because every single time, and I know I'm making a racial thing, they have a tendency to not, they don't correct the mistake that they made, that they were responsible for. You know, and I've said countless times, you know, you just give black people what they deserve, you know, money, and as well as how to invest it, where to put it, and stop using it on drugs and things like cars and trucks and fabulous clothes. Yeah, lose, use it on clothes that are productive, like work clothes or interview clothes or whatever. But don't stick with that money that you get, or whatever the stimulus check is. A lot of people just stick with that thousand, two thousand dollars $2,000, and they just, they just blow it. You know, I myself, I usually spent $10,000. So take it personally for me. You want to invest somewhere when you can. If I had ten grand right now, 
save it up for rent automatically. Go out to go out to eat a little bit, you know, to treat myself. But you know, I feel like you know, when you treat yourself, you have to be, you have to own it. And uh, I know everybody's talking about acolyte Star Wars, that Star Wars nightmare. I don't give a shit about Star Wars at this point. And I, I say that because Chris Gore has is has held this funeral on YouTube live streaming. Man, dude, we you knew that YouTube was gonna, you knew that a. a, a, a Star Wars is gonna die. Come on, let it go. I feel like I should talk a little more about Pamela Camel Harris because I have nothing against her personally. But I want to say this. First of all, America is more divided now than it ever was. Films like Civil War. People don't like them because it they it reminds people of what could happen. It's too real, and it is real, very real. I dare say. When I saw the movie, I was kind of scared the first time around. I was like, "Wow, could this really happen in America?" You know, it happened once before, and I was kind of you know asking myself before the movie ever came out, before I first time saw the trailer for Civil War, the movie with Kristen Dunst and Kaylee Spaney and uh, forgot his name already. Got to place Joel. Great performance by the actors, by the way. It's not. It's not something that's. It's. It doesn't look fiction. While it hasn't happened yet, it looks like it could happen. A self-elected president that elects himself to throw tall, which automatically bypasses two of our amendments, right there. And I, I, you know, it's. I just pray that it doesn't happen, but. The only reason I think Biden would have dropped it out of the way is because he senses that he's too old. Health-wise. Mentally, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. But look, he does look like... I don't know how old... Let me let me look at how old he is. How old he is. How old he is. I'm sorry. How old he is. Because he was elected, what, three and a half years ago. 46th president. Uh, I know this live stream is going to insult some people. I'm prepared. But trust me, I don't give two shits. I don't give one shit. How old are you, Mr. Biden? What's his age? Born 1942. Oh, damn, he's 81 years old. Your youngest president was like 36. That was FDR. 81 years old. Yeah, he's too old for the job. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Honestly, I mean, it's not just it's not like anybody's discriminating him because of his age. He's just too damn old, at least at least physically for his physical health, and that's okay to retire after one year. At least he's humble about it. But we're not united, you know. Um, we didn't work together on this. I feel like this whole four years has been shit. It's been bad, not just for movies, but for America as a whole. You know, there's been issues with the you know, whole woke movement and people protesting about, you know, LGBT rights and stuff like that. And I feel like if Kamala Harris becomes president, if she's elected president, there's just going to be more of that shit. More LGBTQ protesting and trying to fight for shit that, that, that doesn't exist. And you all know what I'm talking about. Pronoun usage. The ability to use they legally. Like, think about it. It has not become legal yet. For you to be required that you call somebody by the pronoun that he or she wants. Um, what I mean by that is, in the workforce, it is a big problem if you expect anybody to call you by the pronoun that you identify as. And, and it's not that, you know, it, here's what it is. Either you're a man or a woman. We don't care about intersex or androgen insensitivity, insensitivity syndrome. We care about man and woman. And there's nothing wrong with being labeled as a man and a woman. That's what it is. But some people are so sensitive. They're like, you don't know my gender. How dare you assume my gender? You're not going to label me. First of all, I didn't never, I didn't label you. I went by the label that you are already going by because I know you're a woman. I'm, I'm telling you what you are. Because that's what science has dictated. There's nothing wrong with that. 
and you're not going to tell me how I'm going to address you. You're not going to tell me what pronoun you go by. I'll call you a she because you're a woman, and you're lucky to get that. You don't want me calling you a he because already so many women want to be men, and that's a problem. But what I'm saying is I feel like if Kamala Harris is, 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 is elected, she's going to – She's not going to do it personally, but a lot of people are going to protest for the pronoun usage in, 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 in employment. And that's going to be an issue because I'm having a very, very extreme difficulty finding work right now, finding employment. I'm in, unemployed for over a month, almost two months. And I'll be damned if I get fired because of sexual harassment because I didn't go by somebody's pronoun. You know what I'm saying? The, the, that's how they're going to go with it. A person can legally sue if I so much does, don't, do not address somebody as a he, she, or they, or fay, or clay, or whatever pronoun they put on the fucking application. You know? My, my eye still hasn't healed yet. Has That's why I'm going to have to close it. Keep it closed. And I just feel like if Kamala, if Kamala Harris gets elected, more people in the LGBT community are going to fight. For those ridiculous rights. They're fighting for rights that they don't deserve. Rights that don't even exist. And, you know, get ready for uh, a civil war at that point. Because you're not going to tell somebody how to address you when it comes to pronoun. You're just not. And people are going to fight. They're, they're gonna, it's going to get personal. It's going to get real. So when I get some money, I'm going to be sure to stock up on the money. I'm going to start to stock up on the resources. Like food, plenty, plenty of Campbell's noodles, what I'm eating now. Got Campbell's, but Campbell's noodles soup, noodles soup for, no, chicken noodle soup for when I get sick. And also noodles for, well, you know, noodles are a good resource to have. They're cheap. When you're sick, when shit hits the fan, when you, know you get lose money. But, um, yeah, that's, that's how I feel about it, you know, um, I, I don't have anything personal against Kamala. I also want to say that, um, well, I'll save that a little bit for, in a little bit, huh, so let's continue to watch more. Or better said, the correct reaction okay. from Trump and MAGA to the news that Joe Biden is stepping aside and that a new, obviously younger candidate, be it Kamala Harris or someone else is coming forward, should terrify Trump. And it is terrifying Trump. Trump having a complete and total childish poop in the sandbox so nobody else can use it tantrum on Truth Social. He's terrified about having to run against Kamala Harris, and he should be because she will wipe the floor with him in debates if Trump agrees to any, which he's already setting up not to because he's terrified. Newt Gingrich, Mike Johnson, others, they are complaining this violates democracy. They are going to try to put forward legal mechanisms to uh, keep Joe Biden's replacement off of the ballot. They are terrified and so is Trump. Let's pick it up yesterday afternoon with Trump on Truth Social and the meltdown just continues continuing overnight. Here's Trump quote. My debate with crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of the U.S., was slated to be broadcast on fake news. ABC, the home of George Slopadopoulos sometime in September. Trump now that Joe though. has not surprisingly quit the race, I think the debate with whomever the radical left Democrats choose should be held on Fox News rather than very biased ABC. Trump is setting up not to debate Kamala Harris if that's the nominee because she will crush him. Trump continuing. So we are forced to spend time and money Sounds on fighting like crooked Joe biased. Biden. And he pulls badly after having a terrible debate. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to present news, don't take a side. And he quits the race. Now we have to start all over again. Shouldn't the Republican Party be reimbursed for fraud in that everybody around Joe, including his doctors and the fake news media, knew he was not capable of running for or being president? Just asking. Trump now wants money because Biden is not going to be the nominee. Can you imagine Trump continuing? It's not over tomorrow. Crooked Joe Biden's going to wake up and forget that he dropped out of the race today. Okay, I'm going to say something. Why don't this old motherfucker just go on YouTube with it? Why you got to stick with X? I'm trying not to say twiddle. OK, so bear with me. Yet we still say tweets with that anyway. 
Why don't you just use more modern social media, Trump? Just use YouTube. Everybody does. I, man, you know, I kind of, I kind of do want them to do that. But then again, I'm thinking of like the negative side effects of that. There'll be a lot of shit on the YouTube algorithm. Wouldn't know how to handle it. What do I do? Do I do? do I, okay, filter this here. Filter this. You can't say this. You can't say that. It would just overload and it would shut down. The server would shut down. YouTube would probably be out for like at least three days. And that would piss a lot of people off. Uh, Trump continuing with, quote, Biden never had COVID. He is a threat to democracy. And then picking up on the Biden should resign angle, which we will delve into in more detail shortly. Trump saying, quote, Don't who's say running our saying. capital C country right now? It's not Crooked Joe. He has no idea where he is. If he can't run for office, he can't run our country. Then this morning, uh, Trump continuing and just absolutely furious mm -hmm. about every element of this, quote, the Democrats pick a candidate, Crooked Joe Biden. He loses the debate badly, then panics and makes mistake after mistake, is told he can't win and decide they will pick another candidate, probably Harris. They stole the race from Biden after he won it in the primaries. A first, these people are the real threat to democracy. Remember that in the aftermath of the assassination against uh, attempt against President Trump, Trump and others were saying calling me a threat to democracy incites violence. Now they are calling President Biden a threat to democracy by their standard. We must interpret this as them inciting violence. And then finally this morning, Donald Trump, he's probably posted more since then. But at some point I've got to get to recording the show. I can't just keep reading his troths. A Trump saying, quote, it's a new day and Joe Biden doesn't remember quitting the race yesterday. He is demanding his campaign schedule and arranging talks with presidents Xi of China and Putin of Russia concerning China. the possible start of World War Three. Biden is sharp, decisive, energetic, angry and ready to go. So this guy is terrified and he is furious. They spent all of last week and tons of money talking about all the reasons why Joe Biden would be bad if he were the nominee and ultimately became president. Hold up. Talking about all the reasons why Joe Biden would be bad last week and tons of money talking about all the reasons why Joe Biden would be bad if he were the nominee and ultimately became president. Yes, they spent all of last week and tons of money talking about all the reasons why Joe Biden would be. Why do you why is he saying they why are you saying they that's that's that pronoun shit bad if he were the nominee and ultimately became president and Joe Biden will not be the nominee and will not be the next president. They now need to find a tax on whoever will be the Democratic nominee. We don't know who that is, although many signs are pointing to Kamala Harris. I'll tell you what those signs are. They have spent the last 12 to 16 hours trying to attack her. And here's what they got. They, they've got on her. She wants to ban plastic straws and she laughs in a way that they don't like. That's what they have so far on Kamala Harris. So I don't know what the out. Why, why do you want to ban plastic straws? Like, what is that dangerous for the environment? What straw are you going to have? Metal? You want people to break their teeth? You want the kids to break their teeth? What come here is going to be. What I do know, what I do know is that this got to a point where the risk of sticking with Biden was as significant as the risk of changing horses midstream. And so there's going to be a change. And then as far as polling goes, without even being the nominees, I'm not voting. Harris and many others are polling almost as well as Biden. The optimistic interpretation of that is that when one of these individuals finally is made the nominee and the American people say, wow, a lot more energy, a lot more cognitive ability, and the alternative is the oldest presidential candidate in history, that could give whoever is the nominee a five, eight or even ten point boost, which would rocket them ahead of failed former President Trump. Whoever uh, Democrats nominate, I'm sure, will not be a civilly liable rapist, will not be having cognitive issues daily as is Trump, 
and will not be a convicted felon. And that in 2024 already counts as a significant advantage. So let's take a very quick break. We will talk about the donations. We will talk about the effort to get whoever replaces Biden off the ballot. We're going to talk about all of it on one of the most consequential 24 hour, but also two week periods in the history of American politics. I'm glad you're here. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the David Pakman show. One of today's sponsors is a book called Aim for the Uprights by Stu Crum, a former professional football player, now entrepreneur and successful business leader, including being former president of Bridgestone Tire and Jiffy Lube. He calls his new book Aim for the Uprights a playbook for achieving your professional and personal aspirations through intentional living. I've been talking a lot about intentionality lately. If you've tried getting up extra early, following the right personal finance practices, and yet you're still working marathon hours, depriving your family of your time day to day, missing vacations. This could be a great book for you. Aim for the Uprights proves that you can regain control of your time and career through simple choices and consistency and a zeal for trusting that small steps will get you there. It's really an instructional playbook for men and women looking to balance their lives written by a C-suite executive with some unique insights about how to make more time for your family. OK, that's enough. So this guy, David Pakman, he already sounds like he's a, um, a biased. You know, he, he's, he says it's called David Pakman Show. Don't ever have a show, like an actual show, where you're doing politics and you be biased about it. Don't do that. I, I don't care who you are. Anytime you say something with any with any uh, like if if you do it complimenting or disrespecting you're showing bias be objective period don't take sides if you're going to be in journalism that's the problem with a lot of journalists is journalism is supposed to be objective and, it, and you know it used to be but but you know people like even people like Matt Walsh he's he's a so. and, and that's Home Depot hates when you do this but I got tired of watching Matt Walsh because he was he was being subjective. He was being biased. And, you know, again, it's not a personal issue with the person so much as you're being biased on live TV. You know, YouTube is considered live TV now. It's even television for some. It's become television for me. I, I don't want to vote because I don't like either of the candidates. Uh, keep getting these, these woes and I'm not i not making anything off of it. Oh, my bad. I'm supposed to, uh... Read that. MJ, I understand uh, that uh, the uh, Vice President Kamala Harris has issued her first public statement. Uh, I don't know if you have it right there, but... It, it... What up, Wes? Sorry, I'm fiddling with the buttons a little bit. Presumably, it's on your phone if, if you didn't have it. Maybe you could read it to our I've viewers. Yeah, I've got it, uh, Wolf. We do have uh, the first public statement from Vice President Kamala Harris uh, mm -hmm. in the aftermath of President Biden dropping out of the 2024 race. Uh, she says that she was honored to have received President Biden's endorsement and intends to earn and win the nomination for the presidency. Uh, this, of course, is the first time that we are hearing from him. We did report earlier that President Biden and Vice President Harris did speak on the phone earlier today. Uh, that is not surprising. Uh, just a little bit more from the Vice President statement here. She says, I am honored to have the president's endorsement and my intention is to earn and win this uh, nomination. 82 years old, by the way. He's 82. And 
And she also says, uh, talks about how uh, it has been such a profound honor uh, to have served as the president's vice president, uh, expresses her gratitude to uh, First Lady Jill Biden uh, as well, and talks about sort of the relationship that they have built uh, over the years, uh, including the relationship that uh, she had uh, with the president's uh, late son, Bo Biden. This, of course, is something that the president has talked about in the past as having been a factor when he was trying to decide uh, who his vice presidential running mate would be back in 2020. Uh, the vice president also says in her statement, with this selfless and patriotic act, President Biden is doing what he has done throughout his life of uh, service, putting the American people and our country above everything else. Uh, Wolf, all of the attention now is going to really be on uh, Kamala Harris. This has already been the case Anywhere, for the last several weeks as we have been uh, sort of in limbo uh, trying to uh, see where the president was going to land in terms of his own decision. Uh, but of course, given that things seemed uh, headed in the wrong direction for the president for a while now, there has been a lot of speculation uh, about Vice President Harris uh, and whether an endorsement formally would come from the president, which of course it has. And so now we are going to be paying close attention attention to everything that she does just in the coming days. Uh, how does she carry herself in public now that this news is out? Uh, does she sort of step up her campaign operations, which according to our reporting, of course, is going to be the case? Uh, we already know that in the last several days, we have seen her sort of step up as the president has been in Rehoboth, including at the last minute jumping on a call uh, with concerned donors uh, uh, just several days ago, within the last uh, 48 hours or so. So uh, this is something uh, now that is totally a different situation for Biden. Vice President Kamala Harris than it was, of course, uh, a day ago. And all attention is going to be on her as the party now figures out how they are going to move forward with this nomination process, Wolf. Yep, she's going to be the leader of the Democratic Party and the Democratic presidential nominee. We'll watch all of this very closely. MJ Lee, well, we'll get back to you. Thank you very, very much. Dramatic developments unfolding right now as well. Caitlin, I want to. So I want to give my thoughts on it. Um. I'm not a Trump supporter at all. I'm not a Trump supporter because I don't like the way he acts like a child. He acts like he's a a, a fucking WWE contestant. That's what World Wrestling Entertainment. Like, you know, if he'd step in the ring, he'd do like, we gotta beat China. You know, everybody likes to mock him. You know, I don't like his attitude, so I don't vote for Trump. I also do not vote for Kamala Harris. And a lot of people are going to be upset when I say this. I might, I, I don't, I hope this video is not taken down because of it. But if it is, it's because I, you know, it'd be, it'd be actually uh, against my constitutional rights. First Amendment. I do not approve of a woman being a leader. I, I don't care what you did. I don't care women have fought for rights. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Some women take it too goddamn far. It, it, it's, it's, you know, a woman such as whoever she is, yeah, she's a reporter. That's fine. You gotta make money some way. But... Being a U.S. president is different because you're now the leader of the United States. And I know that she doesn't have complete, that the president doesn't have complete, he'll complete say of everything, especially when it start a war. But you, we realize that women were not mentally wired to handle things that men are. Men just make natural leaders. Now I'm not. I don't. And I don't know. I know a lot of men, like such as Biden and Trump, have been bad examples of presidents. I know that we have not had one good president in this entire, in my entire lifetime. Actually, the only exception I can think of is maybe Obama. But even he, I didn't like his. I didn't like his fucking Obama plan. Obama health plan. And stop naming plans after your fucking name. Anyway, before that it was Bush. Bush was bad. It was all these presidents, though. Every single one of them were bad. But you know, if 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 we see her as president, so many I, I see I, I can I can see 
in the next few years, women protesting about rights that they want to have. They want to be considered head of the household in the marriage. They want the husband to have the last name and all this other shit that's anti-Christian. And they... Yet they still want the man to kneel when he proposes. They want the man to propose. As a woman, you really don't want to step into a man's shoes. You already have equal rights, equal fights. Like, some some women are at risk of, of getting in a real fight and therefore will beat down if they challenge a man because of that concept. Because, you know, men will get to the point where they're just not caring about personal gender anymore. But if we have all these feminists wise up against the patriarchy, as they call it, they're going to ruin the whole family dynamic. How families are made. Not just in sexual attraction and sexual activity, but the whole discipline and the whole raising kids. And that's why Generation Z is so fucking bad. It's because their fathers are simps and their mothers are just these hardcore, independent, I don't need no man fucking women that are pretty much government wives, as, as I think Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh call them. And we just don't need that. Women are supposed to be ladylike. You know, I keep saying I, had, I don't have anything against women. I do. I don't hate women, I not know, but I do have something against them. At least against the modern woman. The way the women, women, the way the way the women, the way that the majority of women act nowadays. I don't like it. They're not. They don't deserve chivalry. They don't deserve kindness. They feed on your kindness like demons. And this is how they look at you. With this cold, calculated look, you better respect me, even though you don't know me. Like, for some reason, women want you to feel them. And I, and I tell men, you know, men, you have to step up. You can't be afraid of women. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be afraid to ask a woman out. And you shouldn't be afraid to step down and, and say, you walk behind me. And, you know, you open the door for him, yeah, that's kindness. But a woman shouldn't walk up on a man and try to dictate where to go. A man is to lead the woman, to lead the children, to lead the families. That's how, that's how God set it up. And in the United States, we're ruining that. And I'm not saying that Kamala Harris would be solely responsible. She alone would not be solely responsible. It's people's reaction to having a female president. Women would be like, ooh, now we can be leaders. And I can see, once again, I can see a civil war. Because there's going to be some women that are going to protest against that. They're going to say, look, women should not be the leaders. They should let the men lead. You know, we, we don't want to be drafted. Guess what? You know, because cause that's what's going to happen. Like, men are going to say, okay, since women I want to be strong and independent and be like men, let them be drafted for wars. As long as they are not pregnant, as long as they don't have any physical ailments or conditions, they can be drafted. But so far in our government, as a matter of fact, in any war, I believe, any, any type of country or war, women have never been drafted in any country, any nation, any war, even in the biblical time. And sometimes they would volunteer and they would be allowed, maybe if they disguise themselves as men, but they were never drafted. They were never forced to. Because if anybody's going to die, it's going to be the men. The other way, the, 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 that's why they're drafted. You know? The men are going to die, not the women. Because the women could still, you know get pregnant and continue the human race and therefore continue the the nation or country, so to speak. The, the tra traditions can be continued, you know. Um, be honest, the, homie, the human race will go extinct without women. So it's not like women are not important. It's just, it's just uh, it's how a lot of them care of themselves. They ask for a lot without by giving little to, no, to nothing. You know, and, I, and, I've, and I've mostly seen this in, in black women in my life, you know. Like, that, they think that just because they left the abusive husband or abusive man or they don't take shit from a man, that they can be like that way to any man. But I, I'm quick to tell them, like, you're not going to try that with me, okay? I, I get physical with a woman. Now, not because I, first of all, self-defense and be because I got to let them know that I'm, I'm not the one to, to, to try this on. You know, I don't go around challenging, challenging women. I just don't go around letting them get to me. And having a female president, though, that's, that's, a big, that's a big deal. 
um, a, you know, we should not have a woman female president. We should not. It because I know men men are bad at leadership a lot. We have a lot of bad leaders, but women would be worse because they just don't have a sound judgment as men. They just don't. Um, and and plus, it's 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 the it's the mental load that men have to deal with. Even though Biden is eighty one years old, he's still shown capable of handling the mental load that women just can't handle. And they're not supposed to. They're not supposed to bear that responsibility. They they have another responsibility. You know, that's bearing and giving birth to kids and helping to raise them, and that's why. And what I'm saying is you have to respect roles. R-O-L-E-S, roles. They're there for a reason. That's what builds societies, is roles. It's like, you know, like this woman is a reporter and he's a reporter, but there are different types of reporters. She's a field reporter and he's a, I guess, an anchor or whatever. Um, they have to respect each other's roles, you know. If if the whole if if they are to carry the policies of the whatever business they work for, you know, the company they work for, and also to to give should be objective news. None of the news is objective at all. But that's my take on it. It's ever since I heard that Biden dropped out, and then now now it's up to now uh, he's elected. He's elected Kamala Harris. That means that she's running against Donald Trump, and there's only one other person, so there's up to three candidates now. And I, I know we've had female candidates. We had Hillary, Hillary Clinton, but I'm glad that she was oh my God, I cannot imagine how it would be with the shoes president. It's just... Women think differently than men. They do. There's two different attitudes. There's no denying that. And and I guess the women that are natural women, some of them want to try to tone themselves as the men because they think they can be more powerful or be more objective. If the men can do it, why can't we? And that's that's what we don't need. I, I just, you know, that's what Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro and Dr. Stephen, what's guy's name? No, Jeff Peterson. Jeff Peterson. I don't know why I keep saying Stephen. Jeff Peterson, he said that. Why do they want to be like men? That means you want to endure what men have to endure. Men are more at risk for heart attack because of our very nature of how we deal with things. You know? Women are not. Um, and, you know, like I said, I said again, my mother was a tomboy, but she would never really try to be like a man. She knew her place. She encouraged me to know mine. She, if I ever tried to dress like a woman, she could instantly get me out of the dress and tell me, you are a boy. Just because, you know, she knows what woes are. And I don't understand what's with the simpy generation of letting their children express themselves and explore themselves and do all kind of stupid shit that leads them to change their gender at such a young age before they even hit the fucking teenage years. But anyway, let's continue the video and see what the news is all about. i go back to you. Yeah, Wolf, obviously we're monitoring this. Everything is changing by the moment here. We just got that news from Senator Chris Coons a few moments ago. That is the co-chair of the Biden campaign getting behind Harris as the nominee as well, saying that they will talk about in the coming days who she could select to put on that ticket with her as her running mate. Obviously, a, a dramatic development to see Harris now in this situation. We're waiting to see what other Democrats continue to say about this. I want to go back to Van Jones because, Van, you were just talking about, about what this day means and the significance of this in a personal level for President Biden, but also it's a real calculus now for Democrats of what do they do, given there are four months to go before the presidential election. What do you make of, of Harris's statement where she plans to earn and win this nomination? I think that's very politically astute of her to say that because, again, this is a party that runs by rules and we take the rules very seriously. Technically, Joe Biden can't just say, you're now the nominee. If Joe Biden stepped down from president, the Constitution says she's automatically president. But this is not about the Constitution. This is about the Democratic Party. And under our rules, it's the delegates who make the decision. It's not Joe Biden. It's not Kamala Harris. It's not uh, Nancy Pelosi. It's not the Clintons. It's not the Obamas. Our delegates make the decision. And so she's being very politically. Okay, let's stick with the times. Let's stop mentioning Obama and the Clintons. None of them had to do with this. 
we're just going to mention the current candidacy, not 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 years past. Be astute by saying to the delegates, I am going to work to earn your support. I appreciate the support I'm getting from the Clintons and from everyone else, but I understand that it comes down to you. And by saying she's going to work to earn that support, I think that that's that's very very smart. So that gives the delegates the opportunity to feel that they can. You know, they, they, were, they, they have a job to do. Uh, they have to make a decision here. Also, I think that she's, she's uh, letting other people know the water's warm. You want to jump in? <laughs> you want to get some? You can try to earn these delegates' uh, support as well. She's not saying, you, if you come against me, it's a problem. She's, she's, she's not closing the door. She's not saying, I accept Joe Biden, therefore I'm in. No, no, no. So that puts other Democrats in a very interesting position. If you're a swing state governor, uh, if you're a rising Amen. star in this party, uh, if you're a, a celebrity, if you're somebody who wants to say, look, I don't believe in Kamala Harris. I don't, I don't trust that she can win. I think I can win. What are you going to do? Uh, you're going to have to make the decision that, no, no, I'm going to raise my hand and I'm going to say, I think I can do a better job. I think I can win Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, uh, uh, Michigan. Uh, I think I've got a better shot. And I want those delegates to listen to me. So you're going to have to watch over the next 24, 48 hours, does anybody else raise their hand? and say that they want to also earn the nomination. What she's acknowledging is the nomination is not yet hers, and that's a very, very big deal. That's a, that's a true fact, but you know, in other parties, you might just have somebody just demagogue it, steamroll it, say, you know, everybody get behind me, I am now going to lead this party. She's not doing that, very politically astute. But Vin, you've been involved in democratic politics your whole life to see the Clintons, the president, uh, top senators getting behind her as the nominee. Do you think anyone else, if you are a governor and or you know a Democrat who has a lot of star potential and going forward, that you would that they'd be brave to enough to, to kind of get in this so really this ring people. at this point with with seeing who's lining up behind Harris so far? It, it would take an extraordinary amount of self confidence, belief in self to do it, um, but. Are, are there doors that are still open? Yes, there are doors that are still open. Uh, for instance, Pelosi hasn't uh, yet said she's for Kamala. Um, President Obama, as, as usual, is staying very, very neutral, uh, at least publicly, to make sure that, you know, because he is you know, the, the rock star of rock stars in this party, that he doesn't tip it one way or the other. And so you do have some doors that are still open. And so, but the grade just got steeper because Joe Biden gave the endorsement. He gave it immediately. The Clintons came out immediately. It wasn't just, by the way, wasn't just Bill Clinton. Let's be fair. It was Bill Clinton and it was Hillary Clinton, uh, a, a, a beloved, powerful nominee. The last time we nominated a woman, it was Hillary Clinton. Uh, Hillary Clinton came out immediately and said, I'm with Kamala. So the grade just got steeper for you, but the door is not yet closed politically. It's certainly not closed from a, 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 a bureaucratic or technical point of view. Kamala Harris wants it's because she's a woman. She's the only other woman to be a nominee. That's why she said it immediately. To earn that nomination, I, I'm, I guarantee you the, the whip operation is called the whipping operation. She had people who love her, who believe in her, who work with her for years, who are calling delegates, who are calling online personalities and other people, trying to, trying to get people ready to stick with Kamala if the ball comes to her. And so can you put together a whipping operation that's as strong as Kamala's uh, in, in a short period of time? Uh, you, you have to look at a lot of different uh, um, um, yeah, challenges here. But if somebody has the fire in the gut and say, listen, I don't believe Kamala can win at, uh, at the top of the ticket. Uh, I don't believe this. I don't believe that. I think I can do it. Uh, Kamala Harris just said, <laughs> come on in. The water's warm. Well, and uh, you know what I thought about when I saw that both Clintons got behind her? Uh, I was thinking of Hillary Clinton because she is a woman who knows what it's like to run against Donald Trump. And that could be the position we see Harrison. We don't know yet. Obviously, we are keeping our power dry. We're waiting to see what Democrats decide here. Uh, but it does seem like that's a scenario the Trump campaign has been prepping for. They have been singling out Harris. I noticed it multiple times when you and I were in Milwaukee last week for the Republican convention. And I just wonder what on its early basis, what you think that race would look like, a Harris versus Donald Trump? You know, the prosecutor versus the person who got prosecuted. I mean, you know, it kind of writes itself in some ways from our, our side. Also, um, uh, you have a, a younger voice. You have a younger, more dynamic presence. You have somebody who, you know, is, is uh, we've never seen this before. We've never seen a black female, an Asian female. You've never seen that before. And I think Trump's got to figure out how he wants to deal with it. They love to demean women. 
Uh, that's that's something that the Trump team does a lot. They do it too much. It actually goes against, you know, they, they put women in positions of power sometimes in, inside of the Trump team, but they still have this public thing of just demeaning women, demeaning women. That's tougher to do when you've got someone like Kamala Harris. Uh, is Kamala Harris going to make the abortion issue a lot tougher? You know, Kamala Harris, the first couple of years, she wasn't impressing a lot of people. Her polling numbers weren't that good. Her confidence inside the Democratic Party wasn't that high. But you've seen her over the past year get stronger and stronger on Listen the stump. You. You've seen her get more and more self-confident in interviews. You've also seen the party warming up to her, especially black voters who are so critical. And so you, you, you've got a real matchup here because you've got somebody who uh, has... Uh, you know, at, at times been a very, very strong pr in that prosecutor role. Most people think about Kamala Harris, they don't think about her as vice president. They think about her being in the Senate, grilling uh, uh, nominees from the Trump administration, grilling CEOs, just going after people and putting them in their place. So that side of her personality gives a chance to come forward now in a very different way. Kamala Harris won a lot of support from people when Biden stumbled. Biden stumbled. He didn't do well in the debate. Everybody was freaking out. And I was sitting right next to Anderson Cooper when Anderson Cooper brought Kamala Harris on. Mm -hmm. She was cool. She was calm. She was collected. She was strong. There was no time for anybody to hand her talking points. There was no time for anybody to write up a speech. There was no teleprompter. She had to just literally walk out there after her uh, a, a running mate had fallen, really look in that camera and deliver. And she delivered such a strong performance that it gave people in this party much more confidence in her. So she's, she's riding a little bit of a wave now of momentum and support, but the door is not closed. There is a process we have to go through. There are still big donors and big um, uh, 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 figures in our party that have not yet said where they stand. So if somebody wants to jump in, it is not a done deal yet. Somebody could still yet challenge Kamala Harris. Five words you pronounce wrong two years before your brain starts shutting down. Dementia is... Bye. Uh, now, what I said wasn't necessarily demeaning. I just said from a weather objective standpoint because I don't want it to... Yeah, that's one thing you don't do. Don't talk about how bad women are because this isn't an aspect of how women are bad because they're not bad. Because bad is... Like, look, it's, it's not a matter of good or bad. It's just a matter of who... Is a woman really fit for the world of president? Typically, no, because there's just some things you can't handle. And that's fine to admit that because you're not made that way. Because you're not, God did not make you that way, you know. Um, you know, I don't care about how the YouTube algorithm caters this to whatever. I say this because it's the truth. I don't care about people who don't believe in God. I don't care if they're atheist or Christian or whatever, you know. I'm not going to try to control anybody's biased opinion. Anybody, I'm sorry, I'm not going to try to control anybody's opinion. I'm just going to state mine. My, I'm just going to state the truth, you know. Um, and we just don't need a woman as president. Uh, it's not, I don't really vote for Trump. Uh, I never vote for him because he just he's just got an attitude, man. Um, I'm not sure about the whole assassination attempt. I know that the person that did do the attempt is supposedly I believe he's supposedly uh, autistic because he was a loner, but I could be wrong. I might have to, I have to, I have to, I have to see more evidence. But, uh... I'd like to know more why he attempted to, to kill him. Was he pro-Biden, pro-Harris? I, I need to look up more of that. But the, the, the other I go, uh, I don't want this live stream to go too long. It's already going on an hour. I actually do want to get views, so uh, maybe I'll cut it here and look more into it. I'll make a part two. It is a, an interesting topic. I'm, I'm shifting away from my movie reviews or my analyzing movie reviews because I like to watch other people's movie reviews, give my own, either before, middle, or after, or maybe mixed in, and watch other people's takes on movies, you know. I meant to do it this weekend, but I was just so badly sick. Uh, my, my head hurts still, and um, I've been drinking water. 
And uh, I could barely, I could barely hold my head up at this point. So this weekend, I just was not able to. I was barely able to watch the two movies. I watched both. Well, oh, forgot the title of it. Um, oh, Oddity. Then I watched Twisters, and I just didn't feel like giving a review. I didn't feel like watching any reviews. Maybe I'll do it this coming. Well, I know this coming weekend is uh, Deadpool, so I guess I'll have to post it kind of before I do Deadpool. Uh, I'm scheduled to see Deadpool, I think, on the 25th. That's Thursday, right? Uh, let's look real quick, just to pivot, and see if it's going to come out Wednesday. I believe there may be a Wednesday only screening. And they like, and AMC likes to do this to kind of get people to see it first, issue out some some screening so people can see it to I guess control the masses in a way or to control how many people will go see it because it allows you to have like a big ass swarm of movie viewers typically I like to stay within the realm of movies but I just thought that this presidential election was 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 easily a thing to talk about I thought it was a very interesting um, just because now that okay opening day event Damn, it's sold out already. Well, that's okay, because I'm scheduled to see it an hour later in IMAX 4D. Not 4D, no. Oh, my else? I might see it twice. I hope I feel good by this day. Here's the one I'm going to see. Almost full. I'm somewhere up here. I just don't like sitting up front in the, in the middle of the screen. Yeah. Now you got a 1030. Damn, that's almost full. That's why I couldn't find a seat. Uh, if I don't sit in the middle up top, I'm not I'm not interested. That's just me, because now even more so with this eye. Deadpool is like the only highly anticipated movie. And I do not think it'll disappoint. There's a lot of show times. Jesus Christ, there's a lot of show times. I guess I'd be fine if I don't see it in IMAX. I mean, I, was, I mean, I'm gonna see it in IMAX, but that's at four o'clock. If I see it again, I'll probably just pick Dolby. That's only if my eyes up to it. No, I really gotta rest up for the movie. Might see it at 12 a.m. Those are the I might just see again at 12, I'm not going to lie. I don't know yet. Anyway, um... That's all I got for this right now. I may pick up on a part two. But anyway, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Feel free to comment. Uh, I'll try to make sure that I don't... Yeah, just, 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 just yeah. go ahead and comment. I want to know more.